Welcome to another video. I wanted to take on the large challenge of going through all the melee weapons found in the Fallout franchise, and it will definitely take a couple videos to do so. Before I get to that, however, I want to do something that I intend to do from this video forward, and that is to give updates, corrections, or just highlight really good comments from the last video. My last video on the addictive chems of Fallout had an error that one or a few of you pointed out, and that is that Jet is noticeably absent from Fallout 76. This is true, and I have not seen anything officially stating why. However, there are two main thoughts within the community. One is that Bethesda realized their mistake, including Jet and Fallout 4, in areas where it could only have been pre-war in origin. The other thought is that the mechanics of slowing down time simply would not be possible to do in an online game, so they didn't include it. Perhaps it's a mixture of both. We only have conjecture at this point. Hero Brian 2013-2015 pointed out that in Fallout 3, the pit, that there are two people known as the Bear Brothers that the player has to fight in the arena, who are said to be Rataway addicts. So there is a precedent for addiction to Rataway in the newer games, although this is extremely uncommon. One of the comments I pinned by Blake Stone is his take on what many of the camps could be since he has training in psychopharmacology, so his comment is definitely worth a read. Elena Bishop commented and posited that Day Tripper could be Quaaludes, which I think is a really good theory, given that they are pills that were popular in the late 60s and 70s, which puts it in the counterculture era that the label seems to imply. Many posited that the buff out expiration date may be 2113, meaning that it was still not expired by the time of the Great War, but certainly is by the time most of the games take place. Many commented that Excel may be alien tech given the blue color being similar to some of the alien items we see in the games, particularly Mothership Zeta and the fact that it was a prototype. I think this is certainly possible, and if it's true, I am only disappointed that we don't slowly become an alien after we use it. Lastly, I said the jet antidote may be methadone, but that is used to treat opioid addiction, and currently there only seem to be experimental drugs for treating meth addiction. I thank you for all your comments. I try to read my way through all of them, but will always see and respond to the comments on the day I post the video. So if you want a guaranteed response, comment early. Now, let's get this video going. The cattle prod is found in Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 76. In the original Fallout, it was a decent mid-game weapon and was powered by energy cells. Fallout 2 lets you upgrade it to the super cattle prod and is, according to the game, the farmer's best friend. Considering how much damage this thing can do in a fight, pre-war cows must have been absolute units. Fallout New Vegas gives us more details, including that it has taser-like prongs on the end, which is more like a conventional cattle prod, in addition to an electrified coil. The Fallout Tactics prod is the only one without the distinguishing coil, which made a return in Fallout 76. It seems like the presence of a cattle prod corresponds to how rural the setting seems to be for the Fallout game. After looking at all sorts of cattle prods, I can't find one that has anything like an electrified coil, leading me to believe that maybe the coil is a modification done to the prod. The coil would be very imprecise when attempting to zap certain cattle, but would be perfect to ensure kinetic and electrical damage on any target in close quarters. Now, I usually look at each weapon individually, but there are so many kinds of knives and not all of them have enough interesting information that I wanted to lump them all together and focus on the interesting ones. The basic knife in Fallout has the same design as the K-Bar Marine Hunter knife, which is a very popular design. Fallout Tactics had the same basic blade pattern, but changed the look of the guard and pommel. The basic knife in Fallout 3 changed from a multi-purpose outdoor knife to a chef's knife, and appeared in Fallout New Vegas this way as well. A special version of the knife, known as the Cosmic Knife, was made out of a material called Saturnite. This fictitious material is what is called a Sermit, which is a composite material made up of ceramic and metal. 
This made the knife much more durable and hold a sharper edge for longer, making it a much more viable weapon. And I bet it could even cut through a single sweet potato. The basic knife would go on to become the combat knife in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, which heavily resembles the basic knife of the original Fallouts with the same clip point blade. The combat knife is a version that is found in all the Fallout games and is a step up from the basic knife in all but Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 where it is the basic option. In Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics, it is given a name, the Stallona, which is made by Sharp Wit Incorporated. This is a reference to Sylvester Stallone, who starred in the Rambo movies, where he often used a combat knife to do, well, Rambo things. The company name of Sharp Wit is a reference to the hubris of Interplay and Black Isle developers. Other than a damage boost, the guard incorporated a hole for the forefinger to go into, presumably increasing the user's ability to grip and control the knife. The Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas combat knife has a bowie knife form in a more slender package, but with an added serrated edge on the top, presumably giving it a bit more utility. The original Fallout also has a cut knife called the Old Knife, which looks like a dagger, and Fallout 2 has Frank Horrigan's knife which given its length and the relative size to the player is a lot more like a sword. Fallout 3's unique knives all look identical to the kitchen knife with different attributes including Ant Sting, the Ritual Knife, the Slasher Knife which is only used in the Tranquility Lane simulation and the Toy Knife. The Toy Knife doesn't look any different but is apparently a toy with the lowest damage and worst durability of any weapon in Fallout 3. It is found with a hockey mask, likely making it a Friday the 13th Easter egg. The trench knife from Fallout 3 is just like the combat knife, but has a spiked handguard, because apparently someone looked at the combat knife and thought, this needs to be more pokey. This would protect the hand and be functionally similar to spiked brass knuckles. Fallout New Vegas' unique knives include Chance's knife, which is buried not far from the Great Khan's encampment and is stained with the blood of Chance's last duel. This comes from the graphic novel, All Roads, which shows the events leading up to the beginning of Fallout New Vegas. In the Lonesome Road DLC, a bowie knife, which looks like your average bowie knife, can be found with what may be some blood smears, uh, or maybe ketchup. I'll let you decide. In all Fallouts but the original, the switchblade is barely a step up from the standard knife and looks like a very common switchblade. In the Nuka World add-on, the various Disciples blades all have a homemade aesthetic, with the basic Disciples blade looking like a modified lawnmower blade. The knife blade modification looks like someone had a 5 8 crescent wrench and hammered the crescent end flat and sharpened it. And the cutlass modification was similarly made, but with a much larger blade bolted to the wrench handle. Despite these humble origins, these can be some of the best knives in the game. Pikmin's blade doesn't look much different from the combat knife, but has the bleeding legendary effect that can be easily stacked and is one of my favorite hole making devices in the game. Fallout 76 has the same basic knives as Fallout 4 with unique types. The cultist dagger is a crudely made blade attached to the jawbone of either an animal or a human, teeth and all. It has the highest damage ratio of any weapon in Fallout 76. Fallout 76 also sees the return of the Bowie knife, much to the satisfaction of mountain men everywhere. Cleaver type knives can be found in some of the games starting in Fallout Tactics. While better than the standard knife, it is only marginally so. The cleaver in Tactics and Fallout New Vegas look like basic cleavers, but in New Vegas it does bonus damage to limbs. The chopper is a good unique variant in Fallout New Vegas, and while being a lot more rusted, is actually quite a good early game weapon. In Honest Hearts, the White Legs Pain Makers carry a poisoned cleaver that cannot be obtained by the character. The so-called club is a very basic weapon in Fallout and Fallout 2, and is obviously a police baton or billy club. This weapon is one of the worst as it has the same damage stats as the basic knife but was heavier and not worth as much. 
Fallout Tactics shows a different kind of club with spikes embedded in it. It still looks like a basic club that has been modified to deal with more lethal threats that are found in the post-war landscape. New Vegas also has a police baton that is a lot more basic looking, but has another club that is a bit more interesting. The rebar club is exactly what it sounds like and consists of three pieces of rebar that are embedded in a chunk of concrete. With a leather handle, this thing is the quintessential post-apocalyptic blunt force trauma weapon. Another club in New Vegas that is an absolute sleeper is the War Club that was introduced in the Honest Hearts DLC. It is a fairly unassuming club, however, it is a stacked weapon. It is the fastest blunt weapon in the game, and with the Slayer and Melee Hacker perk, along with the Rushing Water consumable that is found in Lonesome Road, the attack speed is extremely fast, making player movement while attacking the fastest in the game. Looking at the types of clubs used by the Native American tribes that live in southern Utah and northern Arizona, namely the Paiute, Goshoot, Ute, and Navajo, I couldn't find anything that resembled the New Vegas War Club. Generally, the clubs were all ball clubs, so-called gunstock clubs, or a club that incorporated large jawbones in the design. Fallout 3 does not have as many unique clubs, but Aliens and Mothership Zeta are equipped with shock and electrosuppressor batons that deal electrical damage and is usually the first weapon that the player will use in the DLC. These weapons certainly are retro-futuristic, but I couldn't find any direct inspiration. Fallout 4 has no interesting clubs not found in the other games, but Fallout 76 does with the Bone Club. The Bone Club is no ordinary bone, it is a chunk of bone from a scorch beast with chunks of ultrasite poking out of it, giving it extra lethality. The next group of weapons are the most dangerous and lethal in the entire game. Yeah, no, that's a lie. We're going to talk about rocks. As a geologist, of course, I want to talk about rocks, but get this, in the early games you could actually fight with them like cavemen. The basic rock can be used as a weapon in Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, and was also to be a weapon in Van Buren. They could be thrown or used to give an unarmed attack a bit more damage. Sadly, there's no way to tell what kind of rock it is either. It is also the preferred weapon of children, who can and will throw them at you because children, children never change. This uh, weapon also has one of my favorite in-game descriptions, where the game states, it's a rock. The Granite Incorporated model is an upgraded version. And just when you thought things couldn't get more ridiculous, Fallout 2 had to outdo the original, as is tradition, and introduce an upgraded version known as Refined Uranium Ore. Doing marginally more damage, most likely because it is more dense, it is processed at Broken Hills and can be sold to the ghouls there. Although, as a note, uranium enrichment doesn't occur while in large chunks of ore, it is usually extracted from the ore directly by various methods, or the ore is crushed very fine to get to the uranium. Lastly, we have the golden nugget that cannot be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat for whatever reason, but can be thrown for the same damage as uranium ore. The Ripper is an iconic melee weapon that can be found in all the games in the series. In Fallout and Fallout 2, it is called the Ripper Vibroblade and runs on small energy cells. It is one of the best melee weapons and is great against armored targets because of the penetration perk. In Fallout Tactics, it is slightly less viable as a weapon because of the huge advantage ranged weapons have within the game. The version found in the first three games is considered the standard or civilian model of the weapon and seems to be more of a tool rather than a weapon. Fallout 3 changes how the Ripper works a bit by doing continual damage as long as the trigger is held down. The Ripper is no longer powered by small energy cells, making it usable as long as it is in good repair. What this means for how it's powered, I don't know, but it looks like it did a reverse power armor where initially, power armor could be powered for a very long time, after which that was changed in Fallout 4, where the power armor now takes fusion cores which don't last as long. The unique variant called Jack, <laughs> get it? 
so funny, Bethesda, has better critical hit chances and better durability. In Fallout New Vegas, the weapon is the same and still carries all the quirks from Fallout 3, including lacking a button to activate it. How it is activated then, I am unsure. Perhaps there is some sort of pressure sensor to make the weapon engage. Arcade Ganon has his own ripper that cannot be used by the player, and a version introduced in the Gunrunner's arsenal accepts modifications and has better stats. Fallout 4 sees a big change in the appearance and other changes to the mechanics of the weapon. The weapon looks more militarized, with the army markings, has a shield on one portion, no teeth on the chain, and an actual trigger to actuate the weapon. We also see what seems like a gas can that fuels the weapon. However, this can never run out, so who knows what otherworldly energy powers this thing. It also now has the ability to do a melee jab attack, similar to other weapons, rather than simply the continuous sawing from Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Reckoning is a unique variant that decreases the amount of damage taken when standing and the Harvester from Far Harbor, which has a higher chance of staggering an enemy. Fallout 76's Ripper is exactly like that in Fallout 4. The Ripper version for Fallout 3 to Fallout 76 is considered a military grade tool that may have been intended to double as a weapon. The Humble Wrench is seen as a tool of creation. However, in Fallout, it is only ever used as a tool for destruction. In Fallout 2, a wrench can be used as a weapon, although it is part of a quest to deliver tools to a character named Valerie, and due to its low attack stats, you're a lot better off getting the XP from the quest. Fallout Tactics has a monkey wrench, affectionately referred to as the Rusty Old Monkey Wrench. It actually does more damage than a machete, which makes me wonder if they considered sharpening the machetes at all in Fallout Tactics. Fallout 3 demotes the wrench to just a miscellaneous item that is now an adjustable wrench, which is only dangerous when used as ammo launched from the rocket launcher. It is the same in Fallout New Vegas, but is a component of a recipe to create a weapon repair kit. Fallout 4 and 76 have both kinds of wrenches, a kind that is junk and can be scrapped, represented as a combination wrench, and one that is actually used to fight, which is the pipe wrench. Although it isn't a terrible melee weapon, it is far from the best, and the unique variant called Mechanic's Best Friend is a version where a circular blade is held in the wrench jaws. So if you want to roleplay as a kill-happy plumber pushed over the edge by one too many septic tank calls, Fallout 4 and 76 are your games. Spears are probably not one of the first weapons you think of when thinking of Fallout but there are many spear options given throughout all the games. The spear of the original Fallout is a common weapon with low level characters and one of the first weapons the player will encounter. While not particularly strong, the weapon has some decorative tassels and some large bobs on the steel head. This is a curious design, as it would make the spear more difficult to pull out of flesh, although if you had adequate strength to do so, it would also do a lot more damage coming out. A spear can be thrown, and in Fallout 2, a character named Minoc can sharpen the spearhead with flint to create, wait for it, the sharpened spear. Fallout 2 also has the sharpened stick, which looks precisely how you think a sharpened stick would look. Fallout Tactics has the most spear variants, and the standard spear has a very unusual look. The odd blade shape and ornamentations give me big mall ninja vibes, and I can't help but think that this design is a lot of form over function. The snake spear has a steel head that is hollowed and filled with poison, but also has a bundle of porcupine quills attached around the spear head, also tipped in poison. It is an interesting design that is a bit better than the base spear. The serrated spear does a bit better damage because of the serrated edge, but according to design documents is made out of napped flint or obsidian in a rather primitive manner. The diamond spear isn't completely made out of diamond, but is tipped with diamond to give it extra penetrating power. It is assumed the rest of the spear head is made of metal, and this spear does more damage than those previously mentioned. The diamond tip is a questionable choice, however, because while diamond is hard in the sense that it cannot be scratched by other materials, it lacks the tensile strength of metal, meaning cracking and chipping would be an issue. 
I would also like to know where people are getting their hands on diamonds in the post-apocalypse. The dynamite spear is pretty self-explanatory and has a spear shaft with dynamite on the end. An impact detonator is also on the end, causing the explosive to detonate when it impacts a target. The design notes specifically say that it is meant to be thrown, as using it as a standard melee weapon would be suicidal. However, in the game, the explosion only happens when used in melee combat and will not detonate if thrown. So perhaps game balance trumped sound logic in this case. The festering spear is rather simple. However, the end has been exposed to rotting organic material and bacteria, giving the spear a poison damage effect. I like that the design documents specifically state that the spear is smeared in feces, which is cool. The barbed spear has an iron head with three large barbs, making it do more damage due to the increased damage with extracting the weapon. The last spear type is the piston spear, which has a spring-loaded mechanism designed to thrust the tip forward when impacting a target, giving any hit extra force and penetrating power. The whole thing is made of metal and is the heaviest spear in the game. No spears are found in Fallout 3, but Fallout New Vegas introduces spears to the series once again, showing that the West Coast seems to have a special affinity for long pointy things. The knife spear is introduced in the Dead Money DLC and used by the ghost people. Looking at the design, it is very obvious that the spear is made of a broom or mop head since you can see the threaded part on one end and four cosmic knives that have been tied at right angles to each other. This presents an interesting blade configuration that would do more damage than a simple double-edged weapon, but because of the increased surface area would make the weapon more difficult to draw back out of the target. Historically there have been some bladed weapons with multiple edges, but it never added enough benefit to have widespread use over double or single edged weapons. Fallout 76 is the next game with spears which showcases the standard spear which surprisingly is a very normal looking spear. A leaf shaped double edged metal head and simple shaft makes it one of the most utilitarian of all the spears. The Warglaive is a heavy metal spear with a large serrated spearhead and two capacitor looking things at the base of the head. Now, I'm including this weapon in the spear section because the standard glaive has a double edged spear like head which makes it function a lot more like a spear. Glaives are a type of pole arm weapon, like a pike or halberd, however a key defining feature is that they have one cutting edge. The glaive heads can vary wildly in appearance to address the specific needs of the user. This heavy weapon does as much damage as a super sledge, but can also be modified to have different heads including a cryo, electric, plasma, and flame head which alter the look of the weapon and give bonus damage according to the type of head equipped. Many of these heads change how the weapon would be used, because rather than having a pointed head with two edges, some are more like a pike or halberd. And so everyone, this brings us to the end of this video, but there is so much more to cover. Although it won't be out immediately, the next parts of the melee weapons of Fallout will come out eventually. Thank you all, and may all of you walk in Adam's glow.